I do them at the same time. Yeah, so my puppy, I'm saying yes, feeding them, yes, feeding them, yes, feeding them. And then the next time I'm um, going their name, feeding them their name, feeding them their name, feeding them their name, feeding them the next time I'm doing their, like I just mix it up, right? And so they're learning, they're learning both. They're moving right, yeah, yeah. And the engagement begins to start right away. And the more comfortable and fluent you get with all these manipulations, the more I'll do several things at once. Right, so once you get comfortable, I don't. I have you guys isolate them in the beginning because it's too much to keep track of, right? But as you get better, I'll charge my markers, condition them to their name, uh, work engagement, do some food throw recalls, do a little luring, all kind of mixed in together, right? I'll just shift from one thing to the other as I'm holding my puppy's attention. But in the beginning, you're learning a whole series of mechanics, and that's too much to keep track of. As soon as you start focusing on one thing, another mechanic goes away. So just like for the dogs, we break it down into pieces. For the human learning dog training, we break it down into pieces. We give you one skill at a time to focus on, so it's not like overwhelming. But once they become fluent, you don't have to think about it really anymore. It's like second nature. And so now I can do two things at once if I want to. And so some of that stuff gets, goes, you go through that pretty quickly. You can charge your markers on the job kind of while I'm working the dog, right? I'm showing you things at the same time I'm charging my markers because I know I can get you to do it uh, because I'm comfortable with how to manipulate you. So the isolating them isn't super important unless you're not comfortable with the mechanics of each of those processes.